Welcome to the Oxen Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Oxen Group. The Oxen Group is an online investment ideas um, newsletter, and you can check us out at www.theoxengroup.com. Uh, we got a free trial there for 14 days. Sign up today, start trading with us, and get some great ideas. Um, we're going to be rolling through the Action Group nightly tonight for June 28th uh, with our usual setup. We'll be first talking about our market wrap-up. We'll be looking at a couple of new positions we've uh, been looking at and got into. Uh, talking about um, Georgia's Corner, um, another one of our portfolios, as well as our extended value portfolio, our long-term portfolio. As always, uh, we'll be forecasting what we see going into tomorrow and the rest of the week. And always check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Um, so we had another update uh, today. Um, you know, the euro strength was really the key to the market today. You know, the Greek Greek vote is continuing to show strength in Europe, and it's allowing the uh, euro to continue to to become stronger, uh, which is weakening the dollar, and that's great for equities. It's great for the commodities. And when those are going up, that can help a lot of our, your different uh, companies that are related to commodities, companies in the energy sector, uh, utilities, etc. So. Um, <clears throat> housing market also shows strength today. Um, you know, we've been talking about this week. You know, the market is going to really want to rally on anything good because of we've had so much down and so much bad news. And more than that, it's also you know it's the end of the quarter. It's the end of quarter two. We haven't had um, a really great quarter, and you know definitely uh, you know your institutional investors, your traders, your your um, your retail investors even are going to want to. Uh, definitely try and take advantage of any kind of, of good market news and, and really take this market up as much as can. Um, and so they've gotten the Greece vote to help them out this week. They've gotten the, um, uh, then today they got the Case Shiller Index coming out. Um, and that was really great for the market as well. You, um, it rose 7.7% in April, and uh, that was great for the market. Um, you know, it was the first time, I think in eight months, I saw that the, the housing market has risen in prices. Um, and that was very, very bullish for um, the market. Um, you know, we also had pretty, pretty good earnings from Nike in the um, after hours. Um, you know, we're, we're starting to get close to that earnings season. Um, it's going to be right around the corner. Um, I think we'll have a little bit of a weak start to July, um, just given the fact that market conditions are still pretty weak um, and we haven't had a lot of great news to go off of. But if, as we get into those earnings season, I mean, it's good to see that a company like Nike, who's pretty much a bellwether, you know, they're, they're globally connected, uh, you know, they sell, um, they, they, they're they very much um, looking at price increases that a lot of other companies have been looking at, looking at the same kind of consumer that a lot of other companies are looking at, and they were able to do very well. And that was very good for retail as well as apparel, apparel manufacturing, and I think that's also very well as you, as you look at the market as a whole. Um, however, at the same time, we did have consumer confidence um, down again. It's continuing to dwindle. Um, you know, the consumer confidence comes in right here, drops below uh, 40 again. Um, it's dropped for the last uh, month or so, and uh, we've had a lot of consumer confidence ratings coming down. A lot of the uh, consumer stuff looking up as good. Uh, you know, for me, the consumer confidence numbers, though, I wonder how much they're dedicated to, you know, just general news out there you know debt debt problems here at home debt problems in Greece uh, the Japanese crisis you know you, you have you have to keep those in mind when you're looking at these kind of numbers for the consumer confidence because um, I think that it's not just about you know how do I feel as a consumer going out and shopping that's not what it's always so much about uh, you know, we did see consumer spending flat for the month so again, again there is that but consumer income did come up um, you know it's, it's a tough time right now. I think we're here in the middle of the summer. Um, we've seen a little bit of a slowdown um, in the economy, but uh, the market's going to definitely look for anything good to rally up of, and this was definitely just kind of tucked under the sheets and will be ignored. Um, <clears throat> market's getting a good start to this week. Um, you know, we got the update yesterday. We get the another update today. Um, we get early after the good housing data and the Greek vote. You know, it's pretty much just right up about 80 points out of the out of the gates, and then. Uh, sort of kind of hung around for the next half an hour, sort of getting up, pulling back a little bit, getting up, and then finally just sort of took off and then flatlined for the rest of the morning. And then, um, you know, at the end of the day, we had another kind of tick up and uh, actually closed that gap going to the vote. Um, I guess you know, I was surprised to see. I mean, I, I was I was confident that we would see the pullback um, in those last two hours, and I, I was kind of 
uh, I was kind of thought it was peculiar that we did see that rise in the last 30 minutes about uh, moving into the close. Um, you know, given the fact that you know, if you you know, we could if that Greek vote doesn't go through or there's any problem with that, you could definitely see a 200 or 300 point drop tomorrow. I mean, that would definitely be no no. There would be very easy for that to happen. Um, and then I also think if the Greek vote does go through, I'll we'll talk about that in a second in the market forecast, but I was just, I thought it was peculiar to see that kind of gain into the end of the day. Um, so what do we do today? Well, um, at the beginning of the day, we also have July 4th coming up this weekend. We've been talking about this a lot on the site that, you know, we wish we were in a futures account because we would have loved to play some gasoline futures this week. Um, and we talked about a way to today. And... At the same time, we also have July 4th coming up this weekend. We've been talking about this a lot on the site, though. You know, we wish we were in a futures account because we would have loved to play some gasoline futures this week. Um, and we talked about a way to play the day. And at the same time, we also have July 4th coming up this weekend. We've been talking about this a lot on the site, though. You know, we wish we were in a futures account because we would have loved to play some gasoline futures this week. Um, and we talked about a way to play that. Uh, and... At the same time, we also have July 4th coming up this weekend. We've been talking about this a lot on the site, though. You know, we wish we were in a futures account because we would have loved to play some gasoline futures this week. Um, and we talked about a way to play that. Uh, and at the same time, we also have July 4th coming up this weekend. We've been talking about this a lot on the site, though. You know, we wish we were in a futures account because we would have loved to play some gasoline futures this week. Um, and we talked about a way to play that uh, off the den. At the same time, we also have July 4th coming up this weekend. We've been talking about this a lot on the site, though. You know, we wish we were in a futures account because we would have loved to play some gasoline futures this week. Um, and we talked about a way to play that uh, off the DIG and the ERX ETFs, which went up 5% today. I'll just talk about it in a second. We also, uh, at the same time, uh, put on a short today. So we're kind of long oil on one side of the fence and then short Sears holding. Now, the long on oil, we already got some gains in there. So... Um, we hope, that, and what we're kind of hoping for is we can get the oil out early, we can get a gain at the open, get out the rest of that, and then sort of kind of get ready to go short here on the market. Um, and one of our top shorts we like right now is Sears Holding. Um, we got in today at 7010. Um, you know, stock was showing a lot of weakness early in the day. Uh, a good day, this is a stock that might not might not move as much with the rest of the market and we also what we did is we only took a partial position back in the market i think also if we do get another i think uh, a good day this is a stock that might not might not move as much with the rest of the market and we also what we did is we only took a partial position market i think also if we do get another i think uh, a good day this is a stock that might not might not move as much with the rest of the market and we also what we did was we only took a partial position and i think also if we do get another i think uh, a good day this is a stock that might not might not move as much with the rest of the market and we also what we did was we only took a partial position and we're going to be able i think also if we do get another i think uh, a good day this is a stock that might not might not move as much with the rest of the market and we also what we did is we only took a partial position and we're going to be able to also if we do get another i think uh, a good day this is a stock that might not might not move as much with the rest of the market and we also what we did is we only took a partial position and we're going to be able to add to it um tomorrow and or uh on either direction because i'm willing to add to it on a lower price because that would mean that we are going to get the markets down or the stock is not showing strength again on an, uh, on a decent day um, and we can add to it there or if we get a pop tomorrow I think it'll be very short term lived um, and I think we would see you know a more weakness coming to Sears holding weight and we can add to it there as well so um, we'd like to for both of those reasons um, for other positions we got into bought back some of our UNH puts today for a solid 40% gain that stock is just solid about the four, we sold the 48 puts when they were at 48 cents Giorgio's corner um, he uh, did not take any new positions today he got a nice little 10% gain there yesterday um, you know he, he's a little bit bearish um, right now moving into tomorrow but at the same time he didn't want to put too much on the table going into tomorrow because he he's in the impression that we're gonna have a big move in either direction tomorrow um, and I, I would be in pretty much in agreement with them. That's why we have two hedges going both ways. One's already in the money. The other one is one that we can add to if something happens. So we're kind of hedging that way. Um, also, we have uh, the EVP application software. Um, for the extended value portfolio, that's our long-term portfolio. We're uh, bringing to the table 12 new companies of coverage. Um, application software companies like um, Intuit, Microsoft, uh, Salesforce, um, F5, you know, companies like that. Um, and top buys so far are Intuit and Microsoft, actually, surprisingly to me. Um, and our top sellers are Salesforce and F5, actually. Um, so uh, going a little bit against the grain, I think, with that. Uh, for tomorrow, 
Greece. It's all about Greece tomorrow. I mean, what's going to happen there? I mean, we do have pending home sales and crude inventories, and I think the crude inventories are important a little bit. Um, but I think either way, they're going to say, hey, you know, oh, the the rise in inventories, oh, that's from the government. Oh, the drop in inventories, great. Oil is going up either way. Uh, pending home sales, um, you know, it's <clears throat> it's not really going to be too impactful um, compared to the other um, housing information. Uh, we do have the Greek vote coming out tomorrow morning. It's supposed to be out at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so I think we'll know um, in, in the early going what, what we're going to be happening. Um, you know, I think, you know, again, if, if it's good, it, it will probably be one of those things that will really take hold and the market will just really grip onto it. It's the end of the quarter. People are looking to get the winter dressing in here at the end of the quarter, going into the holiday season. Um, at the same time, if it's really bad, it could be really weak on the market because they priced in a lot of expectations. Um, I think at the same time, you have to you have to also wonder about um, if the Greek folk does happen. Um, have we priced in? How much have we priced in so far? Um, that's why you know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going all the way bullish into tomorrow because I know this Greek vote's going to pass. But at the same time, you look at when things are confirmed. Oftentimes, if it was expected already and then it's confirmed, it really doesn't have that kind of impact that it had prior to it actually happening. Um, so I think you need to be cautious of that. That's going to do it for us today. Visit www.theactiongroup.com. Emails, calls, be a part of our same percent accuracy.